Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We have the first of two games between myself and Starkiller. This was on the Bootcamp Discord. It's meant to mimic 1v1 ranked, but of course we do know each other's decks and it wasn't an actual ranked game. Now I'm taking something a little bit goofy. I'm taking, in fact, Commonwealth Marine, who do have some upbedded infantry, a lot of infantry as well, and a lot of planes. Now my opponent, Starkiller, we have one visible plane here. Turns out he's playing USSR, and he's playing it a way I haven't seen in a very long time. So we'll take a look at that. We'll see some of these units, some of the unit choices that he's made here, and how that works out against Commonwealth Marines. And I think, to be quite honest, I think Commonwealth Marines might have a niche here against this particular playstyle of USSR. I don't know if it'll work all the time. I don't know if it'll work on every map. That's a MiG-23 ML, and right away, I really don't like this thing. So for 65 points... You get 3 HE power missiles, you get 900 km per hour speed, which is admittedly very fast, but 0% ECM, which is just, it's a recipe for not necessarily killing helicopters in one pass. I mean, maybe 4 strength, sure, because you land the missile, you land a little bit from the gun, but certainly higher strength helicopters will be very resilient against that MiG, and that MiG, with 0% ECM, is going to die when things shoot at it. So. My own deployment here, I have a CV into Charlie, we're doing a little bit of a wraparound into Bravo on the left hand side of this map, which is a very annoying push, we'll see if it works out this time or not. Then the tracked rapiers, proving my points about the 0% ECM, as that 23ML took both right on the chin. I think the tra tracked rapier FSA, by the way, I'm not certain about this, but if it does have four missiles before it has to reload, which is indicated by the 20 second reload time, 60% um, accuracy. The only problem with it is the short range, otherwise that could be very strong. Now, I did have to unload here, as my opponent Starkiller sent something down this road, probably just to see if I had it. Apologies. <clears throat> Sorry, um, it's rather late at night, I'm trying to finish up a couple more of these videos. At the time that this goes out, I will have recorded it about two and a half weeks prior, so front-loading things a little bit. Uh, my apologies there. But I had to unload a little early because he had a couple of units over that way, and the rover wombats are just looking for what they can exploit. So uh, if I can get any kills with the recoilless rifles, great. If I can't, fine, that's all right. And in the meantime, we're bringing in a Sea Harrier FA-2. This guy, of course, does have really high accuracy, admittedly relatively low AP power, seed missiles, and only two, not four. And that screening, a Kahu, takes out one of these T-80s. Now, at this point in time, I really don't have much that can stop the T-80 and can stop all of this stuff from the Soviets unless they get into the woods, because if they get into the woods, my Digger's 90 could do reasonably well. I probably should have had some Commando's 90 over there as well. And we actually got, I think, yeah, you can see the carcasses right here. That's an Osa AKM, and this is, or is the second one? It's one. There was a second one, I think. We killed two Osas over on that side with the Rover Wombat, so for 10 points each, 20 points total, these guys paid themselves off a lot, which is why I just bought some more, and we'll see how those go as well, but... In the meantime, I reloaded some of the stuff up into their transports. We're going to get some SBS down here into the town just to make sure that we can spot things. And the Diggers 90 SAS and the Milan 2 moving forward. Now, this is not clean. This is not exactly how you want this to go. And I do want to say most people, when they see anything around the side of Bravo, will immediately buy lots of helicopters, lots of planes, try and bomb this. The only helicopter from Starkiller probably was already bought. That's the MI-8 NTP here, which is frankly pretty cheap. What you don't want to be doing is you don't want to be sending in expensive stuff into anti-air, but my only anti-air is SAS. It's not really meant to kill planes, it will kill helicopters though, so you have to watch out for that sort of thing. I expect if someone brings anything over on that side, they'll have anti-air and it'll probably be better than you want it to be, which is always the curse, of course, of uh, having things like that. So the same Sea Harrier and Kahu combination. Sea Harrier should probably be behind the Kahu, and that's exactly why, so the Tungushka's gun was turned on after the Sea Harrier, Harrier turned, which, given that the Sea Harrier was first, it does make it more risky for my Kahu to get out. So, a little bit of a live and learn moment there. I don't usually play Marines, I don't usually play heavy air tap at all. It's uh, it's not my usual playstyle, but here I was giving it a try, and just seeing what we could do. Now, BTR 80As, BTR Ts, two of those each is very expensive, especially when you consider BTR 80As for 20 points are carrying 25 point Morskaya Pechota for a total of 90 points in this double stack of infantry and vehicles right here, and an additional 25, probably 35 each, I believe, 
70 or 80 points in the BTRT. So that's a lot of points. These guys need to get a return on investment. They need to be very, very successful. Of course, I didn't quite get the kill on the MIA MTV, and so they will take out some SAS. That's a pretty good return on investment right there. But the Morskaya, I tend to find them underwhelming for the point cost. It's it's just, it's a lot of points. You need a good return on investment there. And in the meantime, Rover Wombats are very cheap. I lose two of them against the VDB-90. I might even lose a third. There you go. That's three. That's 30 points. But these guys allow me to take out a VDB-90 double stack at range. That's 50 points. That is, unfortunately, some of the accounting that's just a fact of, of this game. You need to be trading well. You need to be trading efficiently. And another comment that I'd say, um, Starkiller hasn't yet capped his two-pointer, Echo. I have capped Charlie right at the beginning of the game. Up 148 points to zero, ticking plus two. Cannot let this happen. We're only we're 15 minutes into the match. Uh, actually, are we? No, this was a 30 minute timer. <laughs> My apologies. There. Sometimes when I flip back to 1v1 maps, it reduces it. So we're only six minutes into fighting, and my opponent's behind 160 points. It's just so many points you can't really you just can't really do that. So see here your FA2 circling, and I was trying to buy more planes. Of course, usually these days I've been trying to play without planes, and I figured what better way to try and get into it than to bring a Marines deck, see what we can do, see if we can get some plane train going here, and all that. And the FA2 is looking for that Tungushka, but not seeing it, I was debating diving the MI-28. And the reason why, the Sea Harrier FA2 carries AIM-9Ls, 50% accuracy, 4 HE power, but I thought maybe it wouldn't quite be enough, and we did see the Tungushka back here. So... I don't know. I, it was one of those where I was sitting there going, uh, maybe I could dive for it, but what's in danger here from the MI-28? It does have rocket pods, it does have an autocannon, but the Ataka 5s don't really have that many great targets. I have the Rapier right back here. If he went any farther forward, granted the Rapier FSA, 2100 meter range versus helicopters is not great. I do carry the anti-helicopter version for 40 points in this deck as well. Probably should have had it up there already, to be frank, but uh, I didn't quite. It doesn't really have many targets that were that valuable, so diving with the 120-point Sea Harrier FA-2 seemed like a bit of a potential waste. Now in the meantime, Digger's 90 moving forward, getting a couple of kills there. These guys should not be stacked up like this, but it was, uh, I was attempting to push onto the high ground and it just didn't really happen. So uh, this is also pretty goofy. I have the Stollies, I have uh, Engineers here, so Assault Engineers are of course um, a War Crimes Infantry as I often call them, but they are uh, they carry napalm backpacks, I believe, like throwers. Uh, so, didn't really mean to run them into the Spetsnaz groove. It's gonna not be a good way to start that engagement. But my remaining Assault Pioneers will do a lot more damage here than you might think. Even when they're panicked, even when they've had a bad time, they'll force the Spetsnaz groove out. And we have a Yak-141, which is an interesting choice. So, we looked at this unit when I was doing unit comparisons for USSR, and Rara the expert that we were talking to at the time really doesn't like this unit. The reason why, two long-range missiles, 60% accuracy, 5 HE power, and this thing runs into high electronic countermeasures. It's not a guaranteed kill. If you land one of these, even if it crits, it's not going to do 10 damage. You need 10 damage to kill the plane. So on its own, one Yak-141 is a little bit challenged in a dogfight unless it can really close in, which this is admittedly one of the maps where it might be able to do that decently effectively. We also have BTR-80As. Uh, I didn't really realize this at the time that it was going on, but I did lose my Assault Pioneers over there, and that is definitely a problem in Bravo, where I've lost this entire section. I really have a hard time keeping it, and if you look at my Marine style of play right here, it's very condensed in the middle of the board. I'm trying to buy planes, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to extend my reach that way, but in the meantime, the only reason I didn't have more in golf is we hadn't fought in golf yet. I've capped it because I could got a rover cp coming up because jeeps are bad but they were really the only choice that i had other than infantry and i didn't want to use those necessarily here and we have a bit of a rush the pcr 90 pcr 80a but uh we did get a milan 2 in this town and that's going to be a hard roadblock for those vehicles particularly when there's a kahu i had on call there wasn't really any other thing that i was going for than the t80 and picking apart a 30 point uh 30 point vehicle is worth its weight there too so i figured why not let's give it a try let's just get that vehicle make sure that we're relatively safe at our own base, and unfortunately, we're... Ooh, actually, we did. Yeah, we got the Yak-141, so he tried to dive in. He didn't get the kill, because, again, not a guaranteed kill, and uh, it was definitely close enough for the FSAs to prove their worth. I really like these guys quite a bit. In the meantime, if there was some smoke here, this would have been pretty challenging, because the Milan 2 
He's only really effective at range, so watch this. ETR ADA gets across onto the bridge. Line of sight on the bridge is a little bit weird. We're gonna have Morskaya Pechota hot dropped right next to the town. And they will definitely kill the Milan too, but I have SPS nearby. Should have been microing this better and had the Carl Gustav M2 shooting in. Would have saved me a lot of pain. But uh, even as it is, the SPS just mulch these Morskaya. And that should be a kill. Ooh, gun run with the Harrier FRS1. Yeah, that's a kill. So all of that cleaned up by a single unit of SPS. And the Morskaya are just... I don't know, I, I find them a little underwhelming. Uh, FRS-1 is also a little underwhelming, but it's uh, it's an interesting choice, it's an interesting pick. I figured I'd take it, because it's what's more Commonwealth Marines than that uh, sort of helicopter hunter for 70 points. In the meantime, SAS up this way, Diggers up this way, and on top, I wish I had fire support. But the best tank that I get is the Scorpion Light Tank, 20 points, and it's Frankly, it performs like a 10-point M41A1 for double the price, so I was trying to avoid buying that just to avoid making strictly bad decisions. And here we do get our, our return on investment, so SAS, killing some VDB-90. Granted, SAS are 30 points, but we also got their transports, and these guys, I think, were just in 5-point boxes. We'll see. Tungushka, still alive, using that radar gun to kill my diggers. It's pretty nice. If you can micro that well, they can definitely be good for anti-infantry work on the open ground, but we are still taking plus two, having capped golf and foxtrot, so even though my opponent has his two-pointer now, this is still not going to be, um, not going to be enough. We're 274 points in, 18 minutes, 19 minutes left to play, and that's the, the maximum possible. If you take a look down on the progress bar, of course, turns out we have closer to eight minutes, I believe, left. FRS-1 does go in and dive looking for that helicopter, we didn't quite get the kill, and I did lose the FRS-1, but my Kahu came in and we were able to successfully bait out the Tungushka. So when he fired at my FRS-1, we got vision, Kahu comes in, yeah it's not seed, but I didn't want seed necessarily because seed is only good if your opponent has his radar gun on, and the Tungushka has missiles in addition to that radar gun that is vulnerable of course to seed planes. So more Sky Pechota, BTR ADAs. This is where they will get their value, but where does that come from? Did it come from the Morskaya, or did it come from the BTR ADA? And if the answer is the ADA, that's not a justification for the infantry. It's a justification for potentially the transport as a nice fire support vehicle. But on the other hand, they're 20 points each. We've just gotten 60 points worth of kills. The SAS getting another 20 points after already having mopped up some BDV and 5-point boxes. And that is a worthwhile thing. 80 points worth of kills, and we lost, what, an SAS to do it? Sure, most of a second SAS as well, but yeah, it really could have been worse. And then the Morskai Pechota here, look at how much damage they're taking against Shaken SAS. And I don't even have a tertiary to shoot them with, it's just the primary, and of course the Morskai are using everything we have. This also is one of those moments I nearly clipped this out. I haven't done gameplay clips in a while since we've started the uh, Unit Comparison series, but this was pretty bonkers. K29 TB is coming in, Milan 2 right here. I've turned off the primary just so that they wouldn't shoot at the K-29TB in the air, because I had a hunch it was a command infantry, I had a hunch it was going to land, and as soon as it does, this is a valid target. So there's the load, there's the fire, there's the explosion, and the explosion killed the command infantry as well. So that's a CV kill off of Milan 2 at close range, and it's hard to get more youch than that, so uh, yeah, I was just in there going, okay, that, that I genuinely feel a little bad about that, but it was certainly very fun to watch, certainly very fun to play, and maybe more so for me than for my opponent, but that's certainly, well, that's what you get sometimes, so. Gurkha's 90 shooting in, Spetsnaz Gru shooting in, and this is bad positioning on my part, so my Gurkhas should be farther back, we're taking fire from sort of the end of the zone here, right from the bit of wood line, and there's really no reason to do it, so the Spetsnaz Gru, um, of course, are more than capable on their own, but particularly when they're backed up by by some sort of supporting fire, um, then it's not going to be good for me. This is the Scorpions I was talking about. 20 points, you get 2100 meter range, 2 frontal armor, 10 AP power, 30% accuracy, and 0 stabilizer. So, really not happy with these guys, but I figured I need some fire support. It's been the one thing that's really lacking this entire time. I'm trying to do rover wombats for that, but it's certainly not the best uh, situation to be in. MI-28, see Harrier FA-2 coming in, looking for radar anti-air. We don't really see any, and here comes the Sea Harrier FRS-1. This guy, by the way, very goofy. 70 points, 4 missiles, and you might be thinking to yourself, why do you need those necessarily? Do you need those? How many will you get off on the first volley? There's one, there's two, 
you're only going to shoot two on the first volley. But the fact that we had four allowed us to land a hit in the K-52 as well. Not going to be your usual situation there, but here it certainly came in clutch. And I definitely think that plane has potential against USSR. Maybe not a meta strategy, but uh, certainly one that I thought showed promise, if nothing else. Horse Guy Pachota here, and this is what I'm talking about. They have extra meat on their bones. So 30 total strength to the double squad instead of 15. But they don't have very good anti-tank weapons. So 700 meter range, not exceptional. 17 AP power, not exceptional. Pretty much most things would have gotten the kills there anyway. And we've lost a couple of rover wombats. Uh, things like the VDV-90 that have longer range ATG, uh, anti-tank secondaries might have been able to kill the rovers from inside the smoke, at which point we're in a lot better position. Now we are rebuffing attacks in Gulf, so we're preparing to do some things into Echo as well as this game is quickly getting into the unwinnable territory for my opponent. Still taking plus two, 400 points, and of course with plus two that's 30 points a minute. This is about three and a third minutes that I need to hold the plus two for it. That's not a guarantee, he might cap Bravo again, and if he does, it's going to be down to a plus one, but even if he caps Bravo, even if he caps Golf, I have a top of Foxtrot now, and there's a lot I can do with that. I can, I can just sort of wait and sit, and we did also lose the Rover CP here, which is pretty, uh, pretty rough. I usually put stuff over on this side, but it's usually infantry that's gone off. Turns out my opponent was able to get line of sight and take that out, so we are done plus one for just now. The Lynx H7 is doing absolutely crazy works. We've killed most of the Morskaya here. We've used all those rocket pods. I do have a Lynx Toe 2 as well. But with Skrejits nearby and their 2450 meter range against helicopters, I didn't really want to close any more than that, particularly because I don't think we've taken any damage here right now, but Toe 2, 75 points for 6 strength. Very expensive. You don't really want to be losing that to something like Skrejit, which of course is a 15 point infantry fighting vehicle that is... Uh, the definition of cost-effective, in my opinion. Just, it's a wonderful, wonderful vehicle. So, uh, my opponent was trying to push me out of golf. This seems to have failed a little bit with additional smoke. I think he might have been able to get in. Whether or not they win that fight is up to debate, but I think they probably would. Double more Sky Pachota versus Diggers 90. It's 50 points versus 30, and it would be a close fight, I'm pretty sure, on the offense. I think the Diggers 90 would do better than you might expect with their mini-me um, if they had even the littlest bit a fire against those uh, Morskaya Pechota in the open ground. So I'm getting more numbers over here. I felt a little bit exposed given that Starkiller has pushed into golf just enough. And yeah, we're just going to pepper some things. And we have base defense now. We have track rapiers, foxes, lots of recon, anti helo options, things like that. And yeah, with the Scorpion Light tanks going up to the top ground, that's probably going to be decently hard to assail here. So Probably needed anti-air up here. We are taking a bit of fire. There are more Skype Pachota on this side, but we're getting shots in that should be relatively okay. Hey, yeah, this is what I mean about the uh, Scorpion Light tank behaving like an M41A1. Just, it dies. It dies to everything and its brother, which is uh, not really what you want in your only tank option in the deck. Uh, I do not recommend taking Commonwealth Marines on any sort of ranked ladder or anything like that, but it certainly was fun for a bit of a friendly match here. Um, just as we wrap up this game, FRS-1 leading the way, see Harrier 2 behind, Phantom 2, I'm looking for the ML, I'm looking for the K-52, the MIA MTV. turned the wrong way, but chasing the ML does prove to be a fruitless endeavor. So he gets out, we're kind of circling, not really sure what I want to do here, and we're just evacing. Now, one of the nice things is the Sea Harrier FA-2 did, and with Kaku also, did get a fair number of kills in anti-air early. And now we just buy howitzers, we wait, I have, ooh. Is that mine? That might have been a bomb. I'm really not sure. I do get the 90 point howitzers on this side. I was intending on using them. But I don't think it ever really happened in this game. It does happen a different day. Uh, but, well, maybe not this game. So, plus one. Golf has been counter capped. We're moving diggers forward. We're moving Gurkhas forward. K52 here has been healed back up completely, which is some very nice control. A lot of times you see people send damage helicopters forward and it just kind of hurts my soul a little bit. Here comes the plane train, FRS-1, Phantom 2, Sea Harrier. We're looking for that K-52, we're looking for the MiG-23 ML. We get them, because the Sea Harrier FA-2 and FRS-1 combo is pretty mean. And then with the Phantom 2 getting that second MiG ML, that's going to be the game. Now we do have a rematch with Starkiller, it's going to be tomorrow's game as well. And at the time that these, goes up, that these go up, I should be back relatively shortly. So if you're watching this, if you're still watching this, 
and you want to give it a like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz, I will be back on Discord at worst in a couple of days, and definitely open for business for more uh, community cast, anything you guys want to do there, and some long-awaited games back with members of the Discord community, who of course always do make my day when we have the time to uh, to hang out and play some good games. Highlight units, the Rover Wombat with double Osa kill. Uh, I was wrong, it's not an AKM, just the cheaper Osa happens. Rapier FSA, Yak 141 and B23 ML, and generally most things here were pretty cost efficient. Now, the way that that could have been flipped on its head is if my opponent was able to keep his tanks alive. So those T-80s that the Kaku killed, there's nothing in my deck short of an ATGM that can really deal with those, and the ATGMs are of course vulnerable to counter fire on a map like this, where most of the sight lines are pretty small. And yeah, I, you definitely see that those the loss of those two T-80s was pretty rough. BTRTs losing to Milan 2s, and then the Lynx Toe 2 coming in kind of clutch here with 1, 2, 3, 4 BTR 88 kills at 80 points there on top of the BTRT and the Screzit. That's going to be all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around. And we'll see you again. Ooh, last highlight. See Harry FRS 1, 70 point helicopter, MI 28, and a K 52 in kills. Wonderful stuff. We'll see you guys again real soon.